Happy New Year, everyone. Oh my God, that sounded so fake. But for real, fucking Happy New Year. I'm so glad it's a new year. And I'm so glad to be starting this podcast. And like I had said in the intro, I have had this dream to start this podcast since 2022. And here we are. And we are starting a brand new year together. So let's kick this off with a bang. Let's start this off with New Year's resolutions. Did any of you guys set New Year's resolutions? Like raise your imaginary hand, wave it high. If you didn't, it's not that big of a deal. It's never too late. Some people think that they have to set their New Year's resolution at the beginning of a year because that is when it's only important. And that's not true. You can set goals throughout the year. I actually do it monthly. I actually do my goals weekly. But I do big things monthly, quarterly, yearly. But you can do it whenever you want to. And that's my biggest piece of advice for you today. (laughs) But let's get started. So I'm so glad everyone has come into the new year. It is 2024. We are four years past COVID. We are four years in the positive. New things are coming. I'm so excited, and I'm glad that you're here with me. You know, when I started this, and I got to talking to my daughter, who's nine, and she was asking me the title of the podcast, and I told her it was called The Baggage Claim. And she looked at me and she said, what is baggage? And I was like, wow, that's a great question. Because how do you explain that to a nine-year-old? You know, you all are here and you all are listening because as adults, we understand what baggage is, right? And we all have it. But it's like, how do you tell a child what baggage is and explain it to them in a way that they can understand it And not have it affect them. And so I got to telling her the analogy. Because she said, she said, well, baggage is like luggage, right? And I was like, yes, it's luggage. That's, That's considered baggage. But I said, when you're going on a vacation, what do you usually pack in your bag? And she thought about it for a minute, and she was like, I pack everything that I need. And I said, Mallory, do you pack anything that you don't need? And she said, yeah, well, sometimes I pack toys, and I pack this, and I pack that. And she goes, and then I don't ever use them on vacation. They're just kind of weighing me down. And I was like, exactly. I'm like, that's the perfect analogy. When we're going on a vacation, it's supposed to be a happy time. You're excited, whether you're going to the Caribbean or whether you're going on a cruise or whether you're going to Florida or California or Europe or the Middle East or wherever you decide to vacation and you pack a bag, you pack your necessities because that's what you need. But you always end up overpacking to the point that sometimes it may be too much. And that's exactly what happens in our life. You start grasping onto things that really have no value, no meaning, no purpose on your vacation, on your life. You know, you may have used it several months ago, several weeks ago, maybe even years ago, and you saved it. Because you thought, hey, I'm going to use this now. And here you are on vacation. You've done packed it. You've done brought it somewhere else. And you're not even using it. It's the same thing. So that is what baggage is. is. It is something or things that we carry with us 
that if we didn't carry them anymore, we would have a much freer trip. We would have much more storage in our brains, in our hearts, in our lives, in our businesses, in our families. So we're going to get rid of some of that baggage, especially going into this new year. Because I saw a quote and it was talking about, it, it, it was on Facebook and it was like, delete conversations that hurt you whenever you read them. Delete phone numbers, block contacts, restrict them, mute them, unfollow them, remove the negative energy from your life. Do whatever it is that you need to do in order to heal, to create the positive environment for yourself. And I was like, boom, love it. Love it. That's what we're doing in 2024. Moving forward, we are unpacking. We're deleting phone numbers. We're unpacking our contact list. We are restricting people from coming near us. We are creating those boundaries. We're muting people. We're removing that baggage. And by the way, I know you guys are following me and we're really in our first episode, but I'm just going to go ahead and let you know, you may hear some vocabulary throughout these podcasts because I do cuss like a sailor and I'm really trying to not drop some F-bombs right now, <laughs> but I don't want to be inauthentic to you guys either because if you know me in real life, I am fuck this, fuck that. It, it's just it, life is life and you just have to be able to release it and and talk about it and and drop some F-bombs every now and then. So I'm just here to tell you uh, like eight minutes into this, if the F-bomb bothers you, this may not be the podcast for you because shit's going to get real. But let's talk about carrying our baggage into the new year and what your New Year's resolutions are. And if you've got them, I, I mean, I don't care where you put them or, or how you look at them. They could be on your notes in your phone. They could be on a Google Doc. You can write them down. You can make vision boards. But you have to set goals and resolutions. And you have to look at them constantly in order for you to see that clearer vision. And what we're not doing going into the new year is carrying that old baggage that may have happened in 2023, 22, 21, 20, no matter how far back it goes for you. We have to make a pact here today, right now, at this podcast, wherever you are, you are not taking baggage into 2024. We are not setting goals and resolutions for yourself in order for you to backtrack because you can't get rid of baggage. So we need to go ahead right now and just release, release some of that baggage. And like I said, you're, you'll cry, you'll get frustrated. But when you set a goal, you have to have a clean slate. You have to be rid of any kind of distractions that are going to stop you from hitting that goal. You know, the best example that I can give you, you know, the most common goal for the new year is people want to lose weight, right? That's that is the goal that people write down. They want to get fit. And at the very beginning of the year, within the first 30 days, they may have hired a personal trainer. They may have gotten a brand new gym membership to a local gym. They may have created a gym, a gym, a little workout group with their friends. But then after your first 30 days, like the shit gets old. <laughs> it just does. And you know, you may have been focused on it, but then the people around you started falling out. They weren't showing up on time. They weren't answering your texts when you were like, hey, I'm on the way to the gym. Are you coming? Um, they were 
stating they had other events. So then they their commitments started falling. Those are distractions. Those people or those objects or obstacles are distractions to you from you hitting your goal. Another one of those distractions for the lose weight example is if you and your partner are not on the same page and you live in the same household and you want to lose weight, but your partner doesn't change any of their eating habits, but you're the main person that grocery shops and cooks and cleans and does all of that. But they are constantly eating the same old things and they could be drinking or they could be eating little Debbie cakes at 11 o'clock at night or eating that ice cream with those, with those warm cookies. And that's right in front of your face. That is a distraction. I'm so guilty of that. Let me tell you what the best thing is. If you go grab a coffee mug and you put two pieces of cookie dough in it, put it in the microwave and you zap it for like 30 seconds and then once you get that out, you put two scoops of ice cream on it. You have a skillet cookie right in the coffee mug. Go try it immediately. It is amazing. But if your New Year's resolution is to <laughs> lose weight, do not follow my advice because you will get addicted and you will get hooked onto it. But with that being said, you can't carry bad negative energy baggage into something new. You know, Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll is a up and coming country superstar who, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of had a, a really rough past and he's made it. He's persevered. He's taken baggage and just kind of released some things. But he said something last year that said the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror for a reason. And I absolutely love that quote because it is so true. Because what that tells me, you can't move forward in life if you're holding on to the past, if you're continuing to look behind you, if you're continuing to hold on to bad habits. If you're continuing to hold on to your baggage and then pick from it every time you see that you something's wrong. So I'm going to give you some tools that I had written down in my recent book that I had published in 2023 in order to just help you navigate some things. So this is going to be homework. Get out a pen and paper, get out a notebook, um, get out your notes, get out an email, however, get out a text message, text this to your best friend, have them hold you accountable to this. But when you're getting rid of baggage and you're wanting to be a better person and you're wanting to set goals and you're wanting to improve and you're wanting to succeed, part of that is helping build your self-confidence. And how you do that is by setting small goals first. So if you've already set your goals for next year, excuse me, this year, oh my gosh, can you believe it's 2024? Ugh. But if you've already set your goals for this year, look at them. Are they specific enough? Or are they generic goals? If your goal is to make money and that's what you have written down, you need to set a new goal. You need to give a specific amount, have a strategy behind it, and give it an end date because that's how you're going to be able to measure it. So I'm going to give you some techniques on how to build your self-esteem how to build some self-confidence, 
that's going to help you navigate some things that will all in all help.